Hello, interwebs. It's Friday, September 1st, 2017. Sorry. Notifications. Am I right? I'm just kidding. Um, going to talk about some high school football. So, yeah. So, I'm just kidding. For real, though. I'm going to talk about um, Texas, University of Texas football, Longhorn football. Um, just a season preview, and then I'll also talk about this week's game against Mary Land. No, I'm just kidding, it's Maryland. But they are a land that's Mary. It's a horrible joke. Yeah, it's horrible. But, anyways, um, first up, big news, new head coach, Tom Herman. Um, he's obviously a good coach. I mean, you saw what he did at Houston. He only had, like, two losses there, so he was like, 23, 24, 2, 25, and 30. I don't know. I don't know the exact number, but he had under four or five losses, which is really good for a coach at a school like that. And he wasn't just being crap, crappy, small, like, D3 schools. He was beating, like, Oklahoma, Louisville. He was beating big schools that people wouldn't expect him to beat. But um, he's good with recruiting. Um, just, yeah, he's had... He's had a good coaching past history, uh, worked with Ohio State for a little bit. Yeah, um, next thing up, um, so yeah, he'll be a big impact this year on how they do, see how he does his first year. Um, if you saw my Big 12 preview, I sh talked about the record, I'll go in more depth of that later in this video sometime later. Um, lost to Deontay Foreman. Obviously, he declared for the NFL draft, and he was drafted, like, the 89th pick, I think, by the Texans. <coughs> and, um, he did. I don't know how he's been doing preseason, but, um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, Chris Warren was a backup to him last year. He got some good running. He did good last year, and then he got injured. Um, so, I mean, he got injured, like, the fourth game against Oklahoma State or something. And so he was out the rest of the season. So it'll be interesting to see if he can. And he's been injury ridden his whole career, really. It'll be interesting to see if he can stay healthy and uh, help the team this year because they're going to need a run game as well. Uh, Shane Bouchel, quarterback, most likely going to be the starter. He is, he has experience. He's now a sophomore. Um, last year he was a true freshman, so he was first time on college field in the Big Twelve. So this year is going to be different. Uh, because he's got more experience, uh, he's probably got a different view on the field when he looks downfield and stuff. Uh, can probably read defenses better now. The college defense is better. Um, just like different teams, he can read different. And um, so yeah, that'll be a different, definitely a good improvement that they have a veteran quarterback for that. So yeah, um, yeah that. Uh, um, the defense last year was not great. It was horrid the first half of the season, really. Like, like a lot. 47 in the first game, Notre Dame shut down UTEP, but that's not much. And then, um, like, 50-point game against Oklahoma State, let them score 49. Um, I meant to say 49, not a 50-point game. You get my point. <coughs> uh, Oklahoma, 45 points. I mean, even wins were crazy. Like, Tech allowed 37 points, and then um, like, it was just bad. Secondary did not do that well last year. And so that that's one of the things that needs to improve. They have a new coordinator, Tom Todd Orlando. Tom Herman brought him along. I think he also coached with them at Ohio State. I'm not sure. But um, that's definitely going to help having a new defensive coordinator. Um, if you don't – Recall last year, Charlie Strong, about six or seven games in the season, took over the defensive. No, it was actually the Oklahoma game. I think it was his first game as a real defensive coordinator. And calling plays for the defense, so yeah. <coughs> um, Leek Jefferson, Anthony Wheeler, Brecken Hager coming back. They uh, are the linebackers, and they really need to step it up. They are definitely the leaders on the field for the defensive side of the ball, and they just need to show that they can – they can make plays, they can stop or run, or, you know, they can drop back if they have to. I mean, they cannot. These are the guys who have to do everything. They have to be the leaders on defense, and they have to energize 
the players and stuff. And the secondary, they just need to improve. I mean, last year it was rough. Was like the whole lineup switched for the secondary after the Oklahoma game, I think. And so I like, put in PJ Lock in. I think he'll he has more experience now, so I think that'll help. Um, uh, what's the name? Boney? Bonnie? I don't know his first name, but um, number twenty four. Uh, he he needs to improve definitely. PJ Lock got an interception against Baylor last year. He he definitely improved at the end of the year. So I'll be interested in looking at what he has to do this year. And so, um, obviously for the team, after three straight losing seasons, momentum, confidence, that's huge. Um, if you can get that, you can get anything. Well, not anything, but, like, you can go out there and think you could be anyone. So, uh, um, so some questionable games that I have not written down. Just go looking at the schedule here. Uh, the toughest games of the year. Obviously at USC, but I don't see Texas beating USC on the road. Um, at Iowa State a couple years ago, Texas got destroyed there. So that will be a difficult game, but I think Texas can pull it off. <coughs> um, but that will be coming off a USC loss, but I think they'll have enough confidence to win. Kansas State at home. That's going to be a difficult game just because Kansas State's always had a good defense. Uh, they got a quarterback who can run, I mean. Texas D-line, uh, Puna Ford, uh, Malcolm Roach, they just have to step up. they got to make stops on the line of scrimmage or yeah, whatever it's called. They just got to learn. Well, they don't got to learn, but they need to just make stops, stop them, um, not let them run anything crazy. Not like 60-yard runs can't be allowed. That's insane. Uh, they happen from time to time, but you just can't let them happen occasionally. I mean. Just got to stop them up front. Um, got to put – obviously, well, that's more in the next game I'm about to talk about, which is the Oklahoma game. Biggest game of the year. Top – biggest rival. Um, so, the Oklahoma game is always kind of like a toss-up. You don't know what's going to happen. Like, 2012, Oklahoma beat Texas like 63-20. to 20, And then the next year, Texas was supposed to get destroyed again, and they came out and won. They dominated Oklahoma and won by like – they won 36 to 20. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a definite toss up, depending on who's doing better, who's got momentum going in the game, depending on the situation. Well, I guess momentum doesn't really matter if you look at 2015, because Oklahoma undefeated, just dominating everyone they play. Texas 1 and 4 just got spanked by TCU the week before. And Texas came in and won. That was hilarious. Um, but, yeah, so I'm probably. Why would an Oklahoma fan be watching this? But if you are an Oklahoma Oklahoma fan watching this, you're probably like, why? Anyways, so that game, uh, back to the defensive line, they got to put pressure on Baker Mayfield. That's what they did two years ago. Two, yeah, 22 years ago in 2015. And that's really how they won the game. They put pressure on Baker Mayfield, forced him to make mistakes. Um, they got five sacks, I think, that game, five or six. <clears throat> they held uh, the running backs to just a few yards, not a lot. Uh, and then um, they just got to – secondaries got to be able to n knock passes down. They can't allow easy receptions. They can't have slip-ups like they did last year where D.D. Westbrook's like the only one on half of the field and just walks into the end zone. They can't allow that. I mean, obviously, D.D. Westbrook's gone. Samaj P. Ryan's gone. Joe Mixon's gone. Um, they're gone. So Mayfield's going to have to kind of adapt to his new receivers, uh, new running backs, but that'll be interesting. That's going to be a good game, though. Um, another toss-up. Well, that's really it. But everything else seems pretty clear because I discussed it. This week against Maryland at home. Saturday, tomorrow, because today is Friday. Um, so Texas... Plays Maryland at home. They are favored by 19 now. Uh, it's in Austin against Maryland. Maryland hasn't been doing good the past few years. Um, Texas, <coughs> I think it will be a pretty hyped game because of new coach uh, in Austin. Fans will be going crazy, and just Texas is going to overwhelm Maryland, win pretty big, probably like 35-13. Texas wins 35-13. Um. So, yeah, there's already been college football going on. I mean, last night was the Ohio State-Indiana game in the Indiana. I watched the first half. No, I didn't watch the full first half. I watched a little bit of the second quarter, and Indiana was winning. I was like, oh, they might pull this off. And then Ohio State, they kind of was like, heh, 
<laughs> and they pulled away and uh, put them away. They won by a lot. They won like 49. 49 what? What does that say? 49-21. Yeah. And so there's some games going on now. There's some games last week. There are big games are all this week. Oklahoma State won. Uh, those are top 25 teams that have won. So that's all I got for today. Uh, Texas is going to win tomorrow against Maryland. That's what I think. And yeah.